Welcome back to part three of the Cucumber Calabash mobile automation tutorial. In this portion we will be going over the IDE setup. Please keep in mind you can skip this video if you have interest in using a different IDE, but I'm going to be going over the Eclipse setup using Mercurial Eclipse plugin which is um, a source control tool that the team I worked on was using integrating the Cucumber Eclipse plugin which will allow you to open files as Cucumber and Ruby files so that you can get some syntax coloring and then also integrating the S SDK tools into Eclipse so that you can open emulators and you can use the um, SDK manager right inside of Eclipse instead of having to find it inside of your SDK folder. So the first thing we're going to do is just open Google and we're going to head over to the Eclipse. Click on the download. Go ahead and pick whichever one you want. Go with the most popular one. And this is where you get an option on which release you want. It doesn't really matter. I'm going to go with Mars. I'm going to pick this guy and the 64-bit and click the download alright now that the Eclipse Mars package has been downloaded we can go ahead and extract it I'm going to put it in my same location as before Okay, now that we've extracted Eclipse, we can go ahead and find it and open the Eclipse application folder inside of there. I'm going to go ahead and pin Eclipse onto my taskbar down here so I don't ever have to navigate into it to find it again. Okay, now that Eclipse is open, we can go ahead and create a workspace. I'm going to create one in that same folder I've been using. I'm going to call this Calabash Workspace. Alright, and while that opens, our next task is to um, set up the Mercurial Eclipse plugin so I can show you guys how to pull code using a Mercurial um, repository. The first thing we need to do is actually download Mercurial. So we're going to go on to Google and we're going to Google HG Mercurial. Click the first link, click the download button. Okay, now that the file is downloaded, we can go ahead and click the file. Run it. Accept the terms. Going to change the location. You can leave it where it is if you want. Hit the next button, hit install. Okay. Now I need to verify that the command is working by opening a command prompt and typing hg. So we need to set up an environment variable. In order to set up an environment variable for Mercurial so we can run the hg command, we need to navigate to the Mercurial file and go ahead and copy this location 
and add it as an environment variable. Adding it to the path. Opening a new command prompt, type in hg. As you can see, the basic commands now show up. Okay, so the next portion is to actually get the Eclipse plugin for Mercurial. To do so, go ahead and Google Mercurial Eclipse plugin download. Any of these um, links will work as long as you can find the repository link. I'm going to pick the Bitbucket one because it's the most simple. So, as you can see on the website, they have a link right to their stable build. So, all you got to do is copy that, open up Eclipse, alright now once we're in Eclipse all you gotta do is do help install new software paste in that link for the stable releases go ahead and check the first box and hit the next button hit the next again accept the license and hit finish go ahead and accept the unsigned content and now once it's done, Eclipse will want to restart. Alright, once Eclipse has restarted, uh, all you have to do is hit Window, Show, or show View, Other, Scroll down until you find um, the Mercurial plugin you just added. And if you click Repositories, it'll open up this tab. Right here, there's a little plus button. If you click this, you can create a repository. This is where you can type in your repository if you're pulling down code. So, well, we can just do testing one, two, three. And you can put in your credentials. Um, that will create this um, repository link then you right click uh, hit clone um, type in obviously your username password and follow the prompts through uh, if it is successful your um, project explorer should um, wow that's ugly Anyway, over here there should be a hierarchy of your um, project you just cloned. So that is how you clone using Mercurial. And obviously, keep in mind if you're not using Mercurial, this is not the process you would want to follow, but this is the process we were using, so I wanted to document it. Okay, so the next portion is to set up the Cucumber Eclipse plugin. So all we gotta do, so go into Chrome, type in Cucumber Eclipse plugin, and we can pick the Cucumber IO, which is the main Cucumber um, website that they have, and where it says Update Site, you can go ahead and copy that link. You can go back into Eclipse and do Help. Uh, install new software and paste that link in and grab the Cucumber Eclipse plugin and hit next and we're going to go through the same prompts accepting the license checking the unsigned content and restarting Eclipse Now, I can't actually show you what the Eclipse plugin has done yet, 
but in following videos you will notice when we do open up cucumber files and step files so ruby files um, they will have we'll be able to open them as uh, the file they are so we'll have proper syntax uh, highlighting instead of just having plain color text so you will see that in a little bit in the upcoming videos okay and the last piece of this tutorial will be how to integrate the SDK tools into Eclipse so all we gotta do is go to Chrome and do adding an Android SDK plugin to Eclipse we can pick the first link and we can go ahead and grab this repository link copy that go back into Eclipse and just as before we're going to install new software and we're going to paste this in pick the development tools hit the next button accept the license and finish Okay, now that it's done installing, we can go ahead and hit OK for unsigned content. Restart Eclipse. Okay, now that we have restarted the clips, we need to make um, the ADT, the Android tools, um, visible. So, right now we're in the Java EE and we want to actually be just in the normal Java. So, if you click the plus button up here and pick Java, and you can go ahead and actually just close this one, you notice you get different tools and up in the upper left you have the Android Virtual Device Manager and the SDK Manager so as seen before now you can access this tool inside of Eclipse and you also can create emulators um, with the Virtual Device Manager All right, and that wraps up video three. Um, thank you for watching, everybody.